There is only one day until the 2023 NFL Draft kicks off, and it's time to go over the perfect, ideal seven-round mock draft for the Tennessee Titans. Diving into it on today's edition of the Locked on Titans podcast. Let's get it. You are Locked On Titans, your daily Tennessee Titans podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to the Locked On Titans podcast. I am your host, Tyler Rowland, Titans fans, we are one day away from NFL Christmas, folks. The draft kicks off tomorrow, which means it is a perfect time for me to go over my ideal, perfect seven-round mock draft for the Tennessee Titans. I'm going to go pick by pick through each decision that I had to make in route to what I think is a great haul for the Titans if they're able to bring it back to Nashville. Before we get into my perfect seven-round mock draft, do want to thank you guys for making the Locked On Titans podcast your first listen every day. Remember, Monday through Friday, Tennessee Titans content on all platforms all year long and always for free. Make sure that you get subscribed and stay subscribed to the Locked On Titans podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day want to welcome in anybody that's new and of course give a big shout out to my everydayers out there tuning into the show five times a week with that being said do want to clue you guys into some of the content that will be coming your way over draft weekend i'm going to have instant reaction one minute to minute and a half videos coming out immediately after the pick is made then At the end of each night, I am going to do a recap Thursday night. I'll be going live on the YouTube channel, breaking down everything that happened with a full-length podcast. Friday night, I'll be breaking down day two of the draft. Again, another 30-minute full-length podcast. Saturday, you betcha. I'll be back with another 30-minute full recap of day three of the draft. And then Sunday, we'll have a full recap of all of the seven rounds in the draft all the moves that the Titans have made, and then that'll lead into another week full of shows breaking down all of the picks. I'm so excited for all the content coming your guys' way. Again, make sure you get subscribed, stay subscribed to the Locked on Titans podcast, free content Monday through Friday, all year round. Throw a thumbs up on the video right now if that's something that you are excited about. It goes a long way to help support the channel, and I do appreciate it. But a lot of housekeeping there. I know, but it's a lot of content, and I'm really excited about it. want to clue you guys in. Also, I'm going to be dropping my official first-round mock draft as a bonus episode on the YouTube channel, on the podcast feeds for you guys on Thursday. So you'll get your normal first-round preview where I go over the possible selections that the Titans could make, trade up, trade down scenarios, and you'll get the bonus first-round mock draft that I do every year. So... With that being said, the first pick for the Titans, I didn't do any trades in this mock draft. I wanted to stay true to the picks that the Titans have because at the end of the day, it takes two to tango with a trade and there may not be a team willing to give the Titans the trade they want. So I get to pick number 11 and these are the choices that I have. At offensive line, I could have taken Broderick Jones. Peter Skaronsky was available as well. On defense, an edge rusher like Nolan Smith or a cornerback like Joey Porter Jr., or another edge guy like Miles Murphy. And, of course, running back Bajon Robinson was available as well. So that's something that I considered. But at the end of the day, I've said this throughout the draft process, and I'm sticking with it. I don't want the Titans to trade down in the first round because they need to get their hands on a blue-chip player who will be a high-level starter for them for the next five to eight years. Maybe ten if they're lucky. And I don't think that you can do that if you drop down much further than like 14 or 15 in this draft. And that's a pretty narrow window for the Titans to be able to execute a trade down and still get one of these blue chip players. Or as Rand Carthon literally called them on Monday, a blue player on their board. He said they didn't think they'd be picking this high. 
and they need to take advantage and get a blue player. I agree. Don't trade down. Stick and pick. And you look at all the names I just mentioned, Nolan Smith, Joey Porter Jr., Miles Murphy, Broderick Jones, Bajan Robinson, and Peter Skaronsky, and which one of those prospects do you feel comfortable knowing that they are going to be a starter for you for the next five to eight years? I would argue there are only two names on there that I feel very confident in. One is Bijan Robinson, the running back from Texas, but I don't believe in taking running back in the first round. The positional value is not there. So for me, it was a slam dunk, easy decision to take Peter Skaronsky from Northwestern. Skaronsky, incredibly powerful guy, incredibly balanced. He's a technician, very good with his fundamentals. I mean... Skaronsky is just a guy that's going to be a starter for the Titans for a long time, and the Titans have missed on first-round picks a few too many times over the last years. The roster is devoid of high-end talent, and you need a guy that you can count on. Think if you are general manager Rand Carthon, and you are starting your reign as general manager for the Titans. You need to start with a player that you can count on. You need to start with a player you know is not going to be a bust. Look, the only disappointment that Skaronsky could give the Titans is if his arm length, which he has really short arms, if his arm length prevents him from being an offensive tackle. And then you have yourself possibly a Pro Bowl level guard. Think about Quentin Nelson. Think about Zach Martin. You might be getting that in Peter Skaronsky. And to start your tenure as general manager off, with that kind of double, I have talked all offseason long about how this draft is not a very good draft in terms of high-end talent, in terms of depth. It's not as good of a draft as we have seen in recent years. So if the premium positions of tackle and edge rusher and cornerback and quarterback and wide receiver specifically don't have the type of talent that you've seen in recent years, then take a safe prospect Matt Miller, the draft scout who works for ESPN, said he talked to a first-time general manager one time, and the guy said, coming into my first draft, I didn't worry about hitting a home run in my first draft. I just wanted to hit a solid double and get my tenure going on the right foot. Rand Carthon needs to hit a solid double, and I would say that Peter Skaronsky has the potential to even be a stand-up triple. So, Peter Skaronsky was the pick for me at 11. He can... Slide in, not only is he a guy who gives you a long-term answer on the offensive line, but he gives you a short-term answer at left guard. And then you have Dillard, Skaronsky, either Levin or Aaron Brewer, Brunskill, Nicholas Petit-Ferrer. The offensive line is in a much, much better place than it was last year. And I think that's a big win for the Titans. Peter Skaronsky at number 11. Let me know down below if you would have picked one of the other players that I mentioned that were available? If not, and you like the pick, let me know that as well. But we're going to move forward here, talk about the mid-round picks for the Titans, and we got to add some playmakers on the offensive side of the ball, and that's exactly what we're going to do. Before we get into it, though, I want to let you guys know that today's episode is brought to you by Built Bars, the best-tasting protein bars in the galaxy. Are you looking for a delicious snack, but you don't want all the sugar and all the calories? then you need to try the best tasting protein bar ever from Built Built Bars. They have amazing flavors, guys. Like it, it, You get all the taste benefits of a candy bar. All the bars are covered in 100% real chocolate. They have flavors like churro, peanut butter brownie, cookies and cream, white chocolate cheesecake, which is one of my absolute favorites. They also have double chocolate. They have coconut almond that a lot of people like as well. I mean, there's a huge variety. But remember, this is a protein bar, and you get all of the health benefits that you need. Low calorie, low sugar, high protein, high fiber. It's truly a best of both worlds scenario when it comes to protein bars. So head to your local Walmart, head to your local Sam's Club, and of course, you can still get all your specialty flavors at Built.com, but you got to check these out. Go pick them up, and I promise that you will thank me later. Built Bars, the best-tasting protein bars of all time. Titans fans, we are going to continue today's edition of the Locked on Titans podcast doing my ideal mock draft. 
for the Tennessee Titans, a perfect haul for them coming out of all seven rounds. We started with pick number 11 and Peter Skaronsky, the offensive lineman out of Northwestern. We're going to get into the day two picks right now. Before we do, want to thank you guys again, of course, for making the Locked On Titans podcast your first listen every day, Monday through Friday, Tennessee Titans content on all platforms all year long and always for free. Make sure you get subscribed and stay subscribed, plus a ton of draft content with instant reaction videos, full-length podcast breaking down each day of the draft. I'm going to have content for you guys for the next 10 days in a row. So excited about it. Make sure that you join me here on the Locked on Titans YouTube channel or the Locked on Titans podcast feed. Check me out on Twitter at Tic Tac Titans as well, where I'll be doing live tweeting throughout the entire draft about what options the Titans have, who should be their next pick, reactions, all of that. I mean, this is the best time of the year other than when games are actually being played. So stick with me. It's going to be a ton of fun. But also on draft night, If you want instant live coverage, and look, you can go to the traditional outlets, the TV channels, you're not getting the in-depth coverage and the in-depth analysis that you're going to get from Locked On when you check out their live draft coverage on the Locked On NFL Scouting YouTube page. They're going to have Kyle Krabs, Joe Marino, a ton of other Locked On NFL hosts and local experts join in like me. For example, there's going to be live coverage round one, round two, and round three as well. So make sure that you check out the Locked On NFL Scouting YouTube channel at 7.30 Eastern on Thursday night when we kick off the live coverage with the draft dudes, Kyle Krabs and Joe Marino. But with that being said, let's dive into the Titans' second round draft pick. And again, no trades. You never know if someone's going to be willing to trade, so no trades for this one. But pick 41 It's been a popular pick for me throughout the entire time. It's something that I went back to. I'm teasing a little bit, but I want to give you guys the options that I had before I give you my selection. Jameer Gibbs, running back out of Alabama, who I've been very high on throughout the pre-draft process. You got a wide receiver like Josh Downs was available. Jalen Hyatt was available. Uh, Offensive linemen like Steve Avila or Cody Mock. uh, Sam Laporta at tight end. Darnell Washington at tight end as well. I had all of those options, and at the end of the day, I came back where I seem to keep coming back to throughout the process, and it's Darnell Washington, the tight end out of Georgia. I cannot stress enough how fantastic of a fit Darnell Washington would be within the Titans offense and with Chigakonkwo. We talk about wide receivers so much, and the Titans having pass-catching weapons. Well, I think that there is a chance that the second tight end in this offense is just as important as a second wide receiver. The Titans play a ton of two tight end sets. And with Washington and Chickaconquo and their varied skill sets, Chickaconquo is the six foot two, six foot three, explosive speed tight end that you can use as a secondary wide receiver, as a slot guy, as a move tight end, going across the formation in motion, cutting across the formation and split flow action on outside zone play action. And you can hit him in the flat and let him get ahead of steam. We saw him last year. Chigakonkwo led the NFL, led tight ends in the NFL in 40-yard catches with three of them. He is an explosive weapon. Well, now you add Darnell Washington, the big body, six foot seven, monster of a man with incredible blocking ability, with red zone and mismatch ability to go over top of people and make plays run after catch ability to barrel through people. He plays with the physicality that the Titans have banked their entire franchise on. To pair his skill set with Chigakonkwo's skill set within an offense that uses a ton of multiple tight end sets, I mean, there is no better fit. There is no better fit. With getting Skaronsky, who could play tackle or interior offensive line, to me, it it dropped the need to get another offensive lineman. And I like the wide receivers that you can get in round two, whether it be a Jonathan Mingo, a Marvin Mims, a Rasheed Rice, uh, a Cedric Tillman, uh, a, let's even say an A.T. Perry, a Tyler Scott. I go on and go on. That's my point. So I'm going to skip on wide receiver here. I'm going to skip on more offensive line here. I'm even going to skip on defense here. And go with tight end, which I think is so vital to the Titans' offensive scheme. Darnell Washington, the pick for me, at 41. We get to pick number 72. And again, guys, 
it's got to be wide receiver at this point. If they don't get wide receiver at 11, they don't get wide receiver at 41, it better be the pick at 72. And I have complained about Nick westbrook Akine signing. I have complained about the Chris Moore signing and said I wanted the Titans to do more because those guys are going to have too big of a role in the offense and it's not going to fix any problems. Well, if the Titans don't get a wide receiver in the first three rounds, then a lot of you guys who told me that, oh, they're depth signings, but look, you're going to have to eat some crow. All right? So I'm going to hope that you all are right and that the Titans do pick a wide receiver in the first three rounds. And for me, the options that I had, Tank Dell, Rasheed Rice, Marvin Mims. On defense, in the secondary, I had a cornerback like Darius Rush, who had a great senior bowl, uh, safety like Sidney Brown from Illinois. I know a lot of you guys are thinking, what about Jonathan Mingo? That's your guy. He went pick number 71. Literally, the pick before the Titans picked at 72, Mingo went to the Saints at 71. So with my options, I will happily select Marvin Mims, the wide receiver out of Oklahoma. Mims is a deep threat home run hitter in every sense of the word. He has incredible speed down the field, great at tracking the ball down the field, leaping to make plays, diving for the ball down the field. He is a deep threat. Now, he needs to improve his route running. Um, he needs to play with more physicality at the line of scrimmage through his routes, all that. But that can be developed. But immediately, the moment he steps on the field, you pair him and Traylon Burks together, you have a speedster who can absolutely blow the top off the defense. And then you have your physical weapon and Traylon Burks as your X receiver with Marvin Mims as the Z in two wide receiver sets with Darnell, Wa Chicka Conquo, Darnell Washington, Marvin Mims, Traylon Burks. Let's ride, ladies and gentlemen. Let's ride. Like that is solving some playmaker issues right there. I mean, Marvin Mims also has been an electric, electric punt returner, averaging over 11 yards per return last year. I mean, Mims hits the special teams box, hits the speed box, hits the wide receiver box. I think he has the ability to be the best wide receiver in this draft class with his playmaking ability. I mean, 19.5 yards per catch in 2022. Only, only four wide receivers in D1 college football were able to do that. Marvin Mims is a superstar in the making, and to get him at 72, Skaronsky, Washington, and Marvin Mims? I mean, look at this man if you're watching on YouTube right now, making a play downfield, burning a defensive back, catching back shoulder, adjusting to the ball, big-time college football program. I mean, Skaronsky, Washington, and Marvin Mims. Send it in, Titans. I told you this was a perfect seven-round mock draft. But we're going to get to the last three picks in our final segment here. Going to hit some defense, some special teams, and add another electric playmaker to add speed to this offense. Before we get into it, do want to thank you guys again for making the Locked On Titans podcast your first listen every day. Do want to remind you guys, after you're done listening to this show, go check out the Locked On NFL Mock Draft Special. All 32 teams, well, 31, but all 32 make make a pick, but the 31 first-round picks, there's trades, uh, there's instant analysis from scouts, from college hosts. I make the pick for the Titans at number 11. I think it's a fantastic pick, but there are six different episodes going through the entire first round. All the episodes are available right now on Locked On NFL Draft, Locked On NFL, the YouTube channel, the podcast feed. Go check out the Locked On NFL Mock Draft Special. It's an absolute great way to get ready for the draft. But we are going to continue this seven-round mock draft for the Titans in just a moment. Titans fans, we are going to cap off today's edition of the Locked On Titans podcast, doing the final seven-round mock draft for the Titans of the draft season. I think this is a perfect mock draft for them. We got Peter Skaronsky, Darnell Washington, and Marvin Mims, which is a great start, but we got to hit the final three picks of the draft for the Titans as well. Before we do, another reminder, 
one minute to minute 30 instant reaction videos on every pick going to be on YouTube and on all the social medias locked on Titans Facebook channel at Tic Tac Titans on Twitter uh gonna have full episodes Thursday night Friday night Saturday night breaking down everything that happened going into next week's five shows Sunday through Thursday on YouTube Monday through Friday on the podcast feed. So much content coming your way. Just make sure you get subscribed. Stay subscribed. Throw a thumbs up on the video. Let me know what you're thinking of this mock draft down in the comments. But going to continue moving forward here with pick 148. I'm going to make a pick that maybe some people will be frustrated with. But I don't care. Because I think that the linebackers on the Titans roster currently are overrated, okay? I don't think the that Mike Vrabel and Rand Carthon are super high on Monty Rice or Jack Gibbons or Chance Campbell who didn't even play last year. Luke Gifford is a special teams guy. Ben Neiman is going to be fighting for a roster spot, trying to be depth. Aziz Alshir, average, solid starting linebacker, but nothing special. You know what I mean? He's not meant to be your lead linebacker. So, I got a guy in Marte Mapu, the linebacker slash safety from Sacramento State, six foot three, 223 pounds. Now, you guys may not be familiar with Marte Mapu, and that's understandable. But he, again, six foot three, he is a long, great length in his arms, explosive athlete as well. This guy's a freak athlete. He's great in coverage. Not only can he play man coverage with his length and his size and his athleticism against tight ends in sub package, but he also has a really good understanding of where to drop into with zone coverage. He's got great play recognition. He will blast you with great hit power as well. He's a great blitzer. He's a guy who's played on special teams coverage units. He's a film study guy who is a gym rat who's always trying to learn and get better. He's got incredible football character. They consider him a silent assassin where he absolutely destroy you and play with violence on the field, but is humble and reserved off the field. He had an injury in February to his pec. He should be good to go by the beginning of the season. He will be 24 years old, so he's an older prospect, but I see that as a plus for the Titans who need him to come in and contribute right away. Again, as I mentioned, he was a safety in college. He will transition to linebacker, to sub-package linebacker at the next level, but that is exactly what the Titans need. Ben Neiman, Monty Rice, Aziz Alshir, these are not guys who are good in pass coverage. These are not, they're not, Monty Rice and Alshir are not terrible in pass coverage, but they aren't pass coverage specialists. You get a guy like Mapu in here, not only can he start out his career as a pass coverage specialist on third downs at sub package linebacker, but he also has the potential to be a tight end matchup guy and finally fill that Dane Crookshank role that was left open last year. So he can be your new Dane Crookshank but also be a sub-package linebacker. And if he adds a little bit more mass onto his frame, you might have one of the most talented linebackers in the NFL. Rand Carthon found a ton of late-round linebackers in San Francisco, or at least was part of the group. Rand Carthon said that he was responsible for late-round drafting in San Francisco the last few years, and they were able to find some gems at linebacker in those late rounds. Mapu could be one of those gem linebackers who's just a freak athlete with great recognition, good character, good personality. He gets a little bit more meat on his bones. And they may have found one of their own gems in Marte Mapu. So I love the pick at 148. At 186, another explosive playmaker for the Titans. And I went for running back Keaton Mitchell out of Eastern Carolina. five foot seven, 180 pounds. His size should tell you. This guy is an electric playmaker with freak speed. He runs with force as well to break uh, to break weak tackle attempts. He's not a guy who's going to like break a bunch of tackles like Derrick Henry, but if you don't come with it, he's going to break your tackle because he runs physically. He is a home run threat. He'll catch the ball out of the backfield. Look, 
He's a smaller guy. He likes to bounce the ball outside. He's not going to be a running back who runs in between the tackles nonstop, runs with power and bowls over people. He's got to improve in pass protection. Doesn't give you a lot of special teams value, so it may not be something the Titans are interested in. But you give me Keaton Mitchell to pair with Derrick Henry and that speed and playmaking out of the backfield, that is the type of thing that helps the Titans offense. We're all focused on wide receiver. Okay, I had Marvin Mims, a freakish, explosive speed weapon. But adding Darnell Washington at tight end and Keaton Mitchell at running back, that gives you a lot more than just wide receiver. That is overhauling the offense and the playmakers that are available. You get one big physical playmaker in Darnell Washington because you already have the speed, explosive athlete in Chickaconquo at the position. You get Marvin Mims, who's the speed freak, speed, 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 speed. It's all I can think about. Speed athlete at wide receiver to pair with the big physical Traylon Burks. You got the big physical Derrick Henry. You get the speed freak, change of direction athlete in Keaton Mitchell. Now you have a diversified offensive profile that will allow you to be a better offense and score more points. Speaking of scoring more points, you know what would help the Titans score more points? having a better kicker. And that is why I will continue to end any seven-round mock draft for the Titans with Jake Moody at pick 228, the kicker from Michigan, maybe the best kicker in Big Ten history. He is going to be a big, big upgrade, massive upgrade on Randy Bullock. Look, maybe the Titans still believe in Caleb Shudek. That's fine. Bring in Moody, let him compete, and I have a feeling that Jake Moody will win that battle no matter what, you're giving yourself more points on offense by improving the kicker situation. You're not going to have to battle it out with other teams to get Moody as an undrafted free agent. I love the pick there. So to me, this is an incredible mock draft. I would have loved to get a cornerback. I would have loved to get an edge rusher, but with no trades, this is, I think, the best six-man group that you can realistically put together for the Titans. Peter Skaronsky. Darnell Washington at tight end, Marvin Mims at wide receiver, Marte Mapu at linebacker, Keaton Mitchell at running back, and Jake Moody at kicker. We get a defensive guy with a ton of upside and potential to be a starter long term, but can also help right away as a matchup guy on defense. We get a ton of explosive options on offense, and Mims and Keaton Mitchell, Darnell Washington, and Peter Skaronsky add to the run blocking, add to the fix it physicality of the team as well. I mean, you get a little bit of everything with this mock draft. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Again, let me know how you feel about this mock draft down below. Tomorrow, an NFL draft first round preview going over the prospects that should be in the Titans sites, going over trade up and trade down possibilities and packages. Make sure that you are with me then on the Locked On Titans podcast, free and available on all podcast platforms, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I am your host, Tyler Rowland, and this was Locked On Titans.